What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is tackle three really, really important problems that you absolutely need to know if you're looking to pass your test, your quiz, or your class, because these are the types of problems that are going to show up and really set yourself apart that you understand how to solve a system of equations by graphing. So let's go and take a look at these three examples so you are off and ready and prepared to handle your next assessment. So in this first example, you can see I have y equals negative one. Typically when we're graphing lines, we like everything to be in y equals mx plus b. So there's no m, there's no x, and there's no b. What are we going to do here? Well, in reality, this one actually can be written in slope intercept form. You can actually rewrite this as a zero X minus one. So therefore our slope is going to be zero and our Y intercept is actually going to be a negative one. So in this case, we can say B is equal to a negative one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to negative one and I'm going to graph my Y intercept. Now, the next thing I want you to recognize is when I have Y is equal to negative one, since my slope is zero, that means there's going to be no change in rise over run. Meaning what that's going to do is that's going to create what we call a horizontal line. So therefore Y equals negative one is just a horizontal horizontal line with a y intercept at negative one. Now in this next example, I have three x plus y is equal to five. And some students might say, well, when you have x and y, you could use the intercept method to graph the line. And yes, to graph a line, you can use the intercept method. However, when we're solving a system of equations, I cannot recommend this highly enough. Please put it in slope intercept form so you can go ahead and follow the slope to find your intersection point. Because again, that's what we're looking for when we're solving a system of equations, is what is the point where the two graphs are going to intersect? So to go ahead and rewrite the slope intercept form, what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to subtract a three X on both sides. So by subtracting a three X on both sides, I have now isolated my Y. So Y is now equal to a negative three X plus five. Now it is in our form of Y equals a MX plus B. Now, again, it's very important to recognize here that this negative three represents our slope, which means I can rewrite this as a fraction. So therefore I can say that M is going to equal a negative three over one, or you could also go ahead and rewrite this as a three over negative one. Because again, anytime a negative divided by positive or a positive divided by negative, this understanding might be helpful in this problem, or maybe in another one, just make sure you don't make both the top and the bottom negative, because then that would create a positive slope, which obviously we do not have. We have a negative slope. And my, my Y intercept in this case is going to be five, which again, you can rewrite that as a coordinate point of zero comma five. All right. So let's go over to my Y intercept at five. So one, two, three, four, five, because again, this is my Y axis. That's my X axis. Again, my goal here guys is to go down, right? I want to go down over here. I want to, I want to find where's this going to intersect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow the slope. Now, again, I don't want to use the positive three, negative one, because that's going to tell me to go up three to the left one. I don't want to go up and to the left. I want to go down and to the right. So that's why I'm going to use this representation of the slope. So I'm going to go down three, right? That's change in Y is three. So between any two points, you're going to go down three to the right one. So down three, one, two, three to the right one. Okay. And now what the nice thing about using slope intercept form is I can do that again, go down three, one, two, three to the right one. And you can see here, now we have found our intersection point. So I can just kind of nice sketch a nice little graph here. So you can kind of see that. And we can see these two graphs intersect at the common point of two comma one. That is going to be the point that's going to satisfy both of these equations. Meaning if you plug in a two in for X and a one in for Y into either of these equations, it's going to make the equation true. Hopefully you recognize that's not a positive one. That needs to be a negative one, right? Because if you plug one in for Y, obviously it's not going to be right. It has to be a negative one. All right. Now in the second example, you can see we have two equations in standard form and a lot of students don't want to deal with these questions because it does take a little bit more work, right? Of course we like things when they're already in slope intercept form, but at this one, yeah, we just need to solve for Y. So whenever you have a problem like this and it does require a little bit of work to put them in slope intercept form, just go and do that on the side, right? Or do that on another sheet of paper, whatever you kind of need to do in that case. So what I'm going to do is I'm just say, all right, so if I need to solve for Y, right, I want to put this where Y is going to be isolated. Y equals MX plus B is the form I'm looking for. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract an X on both sides. Therefore I have a two Y is equal to a negative X plus six. I'm going to divide by a two and make sure you divide that two into the X as well as into the six. Now Y is going to equal, now you can't really divide a two into the X, but you can divide the two by the one, which is a coefficient. So that's going to be a negative one half X and then plus three. So now my M, which represents my slope is a negative one half and my B, which represents my Y intercept is going to be a three. Now in this example, I kind of have the very similar idea. So I have a two X plus Y is equal to a nine here. The only thing I need to do though is subtract a two X. So therefore I have Y equals a negative two X um, plus a nine. So again, I can rewrite this as a negative two over one. Therefore my slope here is going to be a negative two over one. And my B in this case, my Y intercept is going to be nine. Now let's get into some graphing. So first one here, the Y intercept is at three. So here's the Y axis, right? So we'll go to three, one, two, three. And now I'm going to follow my slope. Now, should I go up and to the left or down to the right? It doesn't really matter at this point. You know, just remember that negative one over two is really the same thing as one over 
a negative two. Sometimes if you look at the other problem, you might get a little bit of a tip, but if you don't really know, what I would recommend doing is just go ahead in both directions, right? So I could go down one to the left two. So if I went down one to the right, sorry, down and to the right two, or I could go up one, change in the Y is positive and the change X is negative two. So I could go up one to the left two. So I'm gonna go in both directions because I don't really know which one's gonna be more advantageous for me to find in the intersection point. And sometimes you do need to extend the lines as well. And now I need to go ahead and graph this one. So now I have a Y intercept of positive nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And now I have a slope of down to negative one. Well, obviously if my slope is going to be, you know, I don't want to go up right and to the left. I want to go down and to the right. So we're going to go down to, to the right and then down to, so what I'm, sometimes it's also helpful to kind of do a little slope triangle, right? So that creates that line here. And then you can go down to, to the right, down to, to the right and then down to, to the right. Okay, and now you can see that this line here has been created, which is gonna be just right there. And again, you can see it follows along my nice little slope triangle here, and there's going to be our point, which is at one, two, three, four, and then comma one. All right, so sometimes it is gonna take a little bit of work to be able to you know, keep on following your slope, but that's why I think it's just so important to like graph one line and then use the other line to kind of like gauge where you need to go. And again, just follow the slope, like find the y-intercept first and then follow the slope to find your intersection point, which again is going to be your solution to the system. All right, now this example, again, we have two equations. Now this one's already solved for y, so that's good. So we have y equals a one half um, x. Now in this case, we have our slope is going to be a one half, but we don't have a b, right? We don't have any constant. So in this case, our b is going to be a zero because you can easily just go ahead and write plus zero if you wanted to. So therefore, this is going to go right here. And then we're going to follow our slope like up one over two, up one over two. And again, just remember that you could also rewrite this as a negative one over a negative two, right? Because negative divided by negative is positive. Now, the reason why I'm doing both directions is I don't really know what this graph is going to look like. And so I just want to kind of be prepared of having to extend in kind of both directions. Now, again, you only really need two points to go through there to draw the equation of the line. But I just want to kind of like make sure you're aware of that because it is very helpful to know. Now, let's go ahead and deal with a problem like this. We do need to know how to deal with fractions or at least be familiar with them to help us go ahead and solve this equation. So I have a one fourth X plus a one half Y is equal to a negative two. All right. Again, remember our goal here is to put it in Y equals MX plus B form, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want to isolate my X. So I'm going to subtract a one fourth X to the other side. Therefore, that's going to give me a one half Y is equal to a negative one fourth X minus two. So what I'm doing is I have right now my Y is being multiplied by one half. So what I could do is I could divide by one half, but remember dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. If I want to get rid of this one half, I could multiply by a two over one. Now I'm going to do that on the right hand side. Just make sure you put parentheses around it because you have to go ahead and distribute that. You have to multiply that two to both the negative one fourth X and the negative two. So now this is going to multiply to a two over two, which is just one. So that's going to give, leave me with a Y equals now a two over one times a negative one fourth. Let's go and rewrite that over here. So I have a negative one fourth times a two over one. Now, again, you could just multiply this through and reduce, or you could say, well, two over four reduces to a one over two. So therefore this is going to be a negative one half X. And then this is going to be a minus four. So now let's go ahead and find our Y intercept of negative four. So one, two, three, four. Again, remember our slope is negative, right? So this is going to be a negative one over two, or we could rewrite this. So I could say M is equal to a negative one over two, or M is equal to a positive one over negative two. Now this is really important because because a lot of these problems up to this point, we always went to the right. Everything was going to the right. In this case, I don't want to go to the right because again, what the right is saying, you're going to go down one to the right two. So down one to the right two is going to go over this way. I'm never going to find the intersection that way. I want to go to the left, meaning I want to find when my X coordinate is going to be negative, which is going to be using this slope. So therefore what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, the change in Y is a positive one. And then I'm going to go to the left two. And then I'm going to change the Y is plus one and then go to the left two. And now you can see I have found my intersection point, which is actually to the left of the Y intercept. And again, I forgot to mention B is equal to a negative four. So let's go and find out where this intersection point is, which is at one, two, three, four, negative two. So we have a negative four comma negative two is going to be the coordinate point that's going to satisfy this system of equations. Again, meaning if you plug this point into both these equations, it is going to make them true. Hopefully a review of these three problems, guys, is good enough to get you by on your next test or quiz. But if you really want to shoot for that A, if you really want to have a strong understanding of solving a system of equations by graphing, then check out the next video I have for you here. Or if you just want a couple more examples of solving system of equations by graphing, or would like to go and take a look at my notes and resources I provide to my students inside my own courses, then go and check out the links and resources I have for you down below. Cheers.